Welcome back to Movie Recapped. Today I will show you a drama sci-fi film from 2017 titled Oasis. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In the year 2032, society has collapsed and suffers a shortage of food and supplies, not to mention the poor state of the environment. In London, Chaplain Peter visits his wife Bear at the hospital to say his final goodbyes before she's given euthanasia. A few days later, Peter is working with his church organization sharing food with people in need when he's suddenly approached by Vivian, the head of mission resources of USIC. As soon as he hears the name of that company, Peter tries to leave her behind, but he changes his mind when Vivian says she was sent by Morgan, the company's co-owner and Peter's old friend. Apparently, Morgan wants Peter to join the Oasis Project, which consists in building the first permanent off-world human colony on a faraway desert-like exoplanet. This doesn't make sense in Peter's eyes because he and his wife had been against this project since the very beginning, prompting Vivian to explain things have changed after they received a mysterious transmission she shares with Peter. Morgan appears on the screen admitting Peter was right and that the project wasn't just about saving Earth, it was so much bigger than he could ever imagine, and that was why they needed to make a spiritual presence on the base. Morgan believed that presence could only be his friend. This is still not enough to make Peter accept, but Vivian finally convinces him when she mentions the company will make a hefty donation to his church so the organization can flourish in helping people. After lots of thinking, Peter accepts the job and he's transported to the facility in a private car that is attacked on the way by furious people that are tired of companies wasting their money on private projects instead of helping the planet. Since traveling to the edge of the galaxy can be physically demanding, the company runs a bunch of tests on Peter to make sure he doesn't die in the middle of the flight. They're all the standard exams any hospital would run, but Peter does get upset when the doctors run a word association test with pictures and include a recording of Bear that Peter doesn't know how they put their hands on. It isn't until it's time to leave the planet that Peter meets the rest of the crew and befriends Sai, a botanist. Because the trip is so long and dangerous, the entire crew will be in an induced coma that will help preserve the muscle tissue. As the spaceship takes off, Peter slowly falls asleep while revisiting a bunch of memories of Bear, including death. The spaceship arrives at Oasis in the middle of a sandstorm, but the local workers are incredibly efficient and safely pick up the new crew to take them to the base in their rovers. On their way there, Peter can't help noticing three graves outside the building. Once they make it to the base, Paul receives them with some energy drinks, while security officer Sarah double checks the crew list, not understanding who Peter is or why he's there instead of an engineer. Peter explains he's a chaplain sent by Morgan, and hearing that name makes Sarah share a worrisome look with BG before rushing away to have a talk with Vikram, the chief executive, who is having yet another meeting to tell the men there won't be any more drilling until Morgan comes back because those were his orders, no matter if the plants are desperate for water. When Vikram hears about Peter, he isn't amused either and orders Sarah to check him out. Meanwhile, Peter is getting rid of his astronaut suit, but he isn't allowed to shower because of the lack of water, prompting BG to explain they aren't drilling because the surface is too hard. While Paul takes Peter to a shower stall to wash him with blue foam, Sarah takes the chance to look inside Peter's bag to confirm his identity. After the shower, all the newbies are taken to see Dr. Severin, who gives them an injection to help their bodies adjust to the oxygen mix up here. She also injects a tracker in their arms because the company must know where they are at all times. Lastly, she explains there are chances of visual impairment due to changes in the atmosphere plus pressure on the optic nerve that may cause hallucinations and headaches. During dinner, all the newbies discover the food is awful and barely any better than what they give you in jail. Sarah informs Vikram that Peter seems to be telling the truth, so Vikram stands up to offer a welcome speech mentioning the colony of dreams, which BG corrects the nightmares under his breath. After mentioning the importance of teamwork, Vikram offers a specific welcome to Peter and invites him to say something as well. People are a bit weirded out about having a chaplain living with them now, but Peter quickly earns everyone's respect with a heartwarming speech that calends everyone inspiring for living away from their families for the sake of humanity. If anyone needs an ear, he'll be there for them. Afterward, BG shows Peter to his room, which is very small but comes with a computer that allows him to send emails home and message internally. BG also shares some medicine with Peter to help him sleep because getting behind on his sleep may have bad consequences. Before BG leaves, Peter asks where Morgan is, to which BG answers he's out there somewhere as he points at the window. While Sarah is in her office sending messages to her daughter Frida, Peter receives a message from an unknown sender with one single sentence that he recognizes from the Bible. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the light. By the time the sun rises, the sandstorm is already gone, so Peter takes a chance to explore outside, noticing the multiple moons in the sky and the graves again. Then he approaches Alice to ask her about the different machines and she explains the basics of the work they're doing. She also shows him the drones that follow them all the time and points out they'll never live on Earth again. When Peter asks about Morgan, Alice doesn't answer and only wonders why Peter was told about this place at all. Their talk is interrupted by BG, who informs Peter Vikram is looking for him. 
After Peter is gone, BG wonders why they sent a chaplain, to which Alice answers, funerals. On his way to Vikram's office, Peter passes by Morgan's room, allowing him to overhear two men looking through his things under Vikram's orders because he wants them to find anything strange. These men also comment on Morgan apparently going crazy, and Peter notices the same Bible quote from the message written on the wall before the men see him too, and they close the door. When Peter makes it to the office, Vikram immediately asks what Morgan said to convince him to come, but Peter is already getting suspicious and just says Morgan wanted a man of God in the vase. He asks again about Morgan's whereabouts, and when Vikram tries to say he's just exploring, Peter admits he knows they're searching his room. Finding himself cornered, Vikram confesses they haven't heard from Morgan for more than a week. In the meantime, Sarah has gone for a run among the dunes, only to be shocked to see Frida around as well. Sarah knows it's probably a hallucination, but hearing her call her mummy makes her follow her anyway, and that's how Sarah comes across Morgan's abandoned rover half sunk in the sand and with a blood stain on the windshield. Morgan's bag is still there too, so Sarah decides to call Vikram to tell him of her discovery. Back at the base, Peter tries to ignore the bothersome presence of the drone that follows him to concentrate on his job. He's given the media room to do his thing, but this room is a complete mess and he'll have to clean it alone. When Sarah comes back, she shows Vikram the contents of the bag, a box with enough medicine to treat an army, a card with weird doodles, and a bunch of postcards with beautiful art of religious scenes. Sarah thinks they should send a search party, but Vikram reminds her Morgan took cut his own tracker out so it would be a waste of resources. By now, it's best to assume Morgan is dead, thus Vikram announces they'll start to drilling again in the morning. Sarah won't stand for this since her work is to take care of everyone's safety, but Vikram dismisses her by reminding her that her work used to be as a detective and she lost it for not respecting orders, a mistake she can't afford to make again. After Sarah is gone, Vikram turns to his computer to check the security cameras and spy on Peter, who has received a visit from Paul in need of a friendly ear. Paul shares some stories about his childhood, including the fact he loved horses and bought a foal of his own. He wanted his horse to run and win races, but he made a huge mistake when he paid a dodgy vet to give the horse some performance enhancers that ended up killing the poor animal. The horse screamed in agony and Paul had to put him down as an act of mercy. This memory still haunts him to this day. Peter tries to offer some tips to help him and move on from past mistakes, but Paul immediately interrupts him to admit he sees the horse here on the planet all the time. He doesn't think they're hallucinations, there's something here that's affecting everyone, making them see things and causing all these accidents. The three men that died so far all saw something that distracted them before they walked into their death. When Peter asks what Morgan had to say about it, Paul glances at the security camera and tells him to ask Sarah, who did the investigation on those deaths. Afterward, Peter sneaks into Sarah's office to look at Morgan's bag, finding a tube with blood and the religious postcards. Sarah finds him and scolds him, but Peter doesn't let her intimidate him and begins asking questions. Unfortunately, Sarah still doesn't cooperate and pretends she doesn't know what happened to Morgan. She also claims the three deaths were accidents. In return, Sarah does some questioning of her own, showing Peter she's found his old criminal record. However, Peter isn't bothered by this and just explains meeting his wife changed his life and that it was her who brought him to God. That night, BG can't sleep because he keeps seeing his father outside his window, so he goes back to ask Severin for something stronger and permission to stay platonically in her room for company. The next day, Paul is starting the drill again, only to get distracted by his old horse appearing before him. Forgetting it's not supposed to be real, Paul comes closer and tries to touch it, only to end up coming too close to the drill and getting heavily wounded. The workers immediately take Paul to Severin, who does her best to try to work on Paul's wound while he mumbles something about seeing his horse again, but the drill damage is too big. Peter holds Paul's hand and offers a prayer for his soul as the poor man dies while remembering his horse. When Sarah asks what happened and hears the story, she curses and stomps out of the room, unable to deal with this anymore. Alice doesn't like what she's hearing either and takes Peter to her room to show him a special message that Morgan left with her, saying she should show it to Peter if he ever came, but only if Alice trusted him. The message is an audio clip of Morgan saying something is amazing, and another weird voice repeating the words, Jesus Christ. He also asks Peter to find him and ends the recording with the same Bible quote from the previous message. Meanwhile, Vikram holds a meeting to inform everyone of Paul's death, calling it an accident. This time though, nobody will accept this excuse because they saw Paul reaching out for the drill on purpose. BG cuts in and says the planet is messing with their mind, so he believes they don't belong there. Everyone has been seeing things they shouldn't, and Sai reminds them of the effects Severin told them about when they arrived. However, Severin is tired of this too and confesses those side effects aren't real. They're a lie Morgan told her to spread after the first death. The crew gets furious and demands answers, and seeing as he can't control them, Vikram puts up a new rule. Nobody leaves the building until further notice. Sarah notices Peter didn't come to the meeting and goes looking for him. At the moment, Alice is giving him access to Morgan's room where Peter finds a detailed map with coordinates under the Bible quote that can only be seen if you turn off the lights. 
Desperate for answers, Peter rushes outside to get on a rover and is found by Sarah, who is tired of seeing visions of her daughter and allows Peter to leave so they could get those answers. Vikram finally sends a message to Earth to report Morgan's disappearance and invokes Article 76 to assume command of the base to protect it from those mysterious deaths. When Sarah comes to see him, she pretends she wasn't able to find Peter, who has put the coordinates on the GPS and is driving through the middle of the desert. Eventually, he finds a path of black rocks that he follows into a cave where he's shocked to find a bunch of people, including Bear herself. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.